Hi, little ones. <laughs> Say hi. 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 How old are you? Four. Four. What's your name? Alia. Oh, that's a beautiful name. Can you say hi? <laughs> so cute. She's my CEO. Ah, uh, yeah. They usually, they do usually run the business. They do. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. <clears throat> they do things better than I do. So, <laughs> so um, <clears throat> I want to take a moment to introduce our guest. Okay. This is a, a warrior truth teller, an alpha mother who is the founder of the nonprofit organization, Crazy Mothers. And I absolutely love the name, by the way. I think it's very fitting for the people that are awake today. Um, and whose purpose is to educate, inform, and empower parents of the risk of vaccines, which are not discussed with pediatricians. After her son was vaccine injured, she looked for help for nat with natural medicine and got her son back. Now invigorated with a new mission, she, she seeks out to uh, spread the truth involved with vaccine safety and help parents make more informed decisions. It is a true honor to have you here today with us, Hillary Simpson. Oh, thank you so much, Gabe, for having me. It's my pleasure. I, I mean, uh, we've got to band together, especially in times like today, and, and let our voice be heard. Yes, absolutely. It, things are getting crazy right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? I know you're a, a you have a family with uh, three children. Yeah. Yeah. So I have three children. My daughter is eight, and then I have two boys who are five and almost three. And my five year old is the little boy that I wrote the Crazy Mothers video about. Um, and that's kind of how we launched the nonprofit is with that video. Um, it it took off. It blew up. Um, and I think, you know, it was such a humbling experience mm -hmm. because I was able to um, help a lot of moms kind of understand that they had experienced vaccine injury too. Because I think what is so um, unknown at this point is that the, the minor stuff, the eczema, the allergies, the autoimmune disorders, um, you know, ADHD, that can all be not all attributed to vaccines but it can be because of vaccine injury um uh, gi issues really so many kids with gi issues and um so that was one of, of the proudest moments about about the video is is having having moms realize oh my gosh my kids are always sick maybe there's some something more to this story about vaccines yeah and uh, so, so can you tell our listeners, when did you first begin to feel uh, crazy? Oh, yeah. No, I, I know exactly when that was, actually. So my son, um, for those of you who haven't seen the video, uh, experienced a reaction to his six-month vaccination. Um, we call it the DTAP screen. So he had the DTAP, he had the hip, and he had the, the, um, the rotavirus vaccine. Went home and just went to sleep woke up and screamed, screamed his little baby brains out for weeks, um, arching his back, didn't want to be touched. Uh, I called the nurse and she said it wasn't a vaccine reaction because he didn't have a fever. Um, so that was the first moment when I was like, am I crazy? What, what is happening with my baby? Something is happening. He's hurting, screaming. It's that pain scream, you know? And, um, but I have these medical professionals telling me that I'm wrong. So that's when that, that first gut instinct really came in. And then um, the second really big push for that, for me feeling crazy was, was um, a few months later, I'd say maybe actually five or six months later when I was realizing he was developing food allergies now because of everything. Um, I talked to his pediatrician about it at the time, and she said, no, it's, it's just because you're a vegetarian. It's just because, um, you know, the chronic uh, flesh-burning diarrhea is because you're a vegetarian. He just eats too many fruits and vegetables. And he's not getting enough of this. And I'm like, okay, all right. So I'm crazy. This is crazy. Something, something is not right here. It's not all adding up. So let's figure it out and fix the problem. Yeah, and I think one of the... Uh... 
one of the tragedies of modern medicine today and, and nurses and things like that is they ignore the mother's instincts. And I would say a mother knows her child better than anyone else, especially medical professionals today. And uh, you know your child, you know, you know what they like to do, what they don't like to do, how they sleep, what position they sleep in, all those things that um, <clears throat> that unique bond is there for. And when you know there's something that's changed and you know that something is extraordinarily out of the normal, it can be very frustrating to be ignored by these <clears throat> professionals. Absolutely. And, and that's one of our goals with Crazy Mothers is to empower moms and dads too. Um, crazy grandmothers, whoever yeah. out there taking, taking care of our babies to really, you know, um, have the education so that they can go, you know, go forward and say, no, this is a vaccine injury. I know what I'm supposed to be looking for. Um, I need to be reported, so on and so forth. I think it's really important because, uh, you know, I was raised um, just from my personal experience. And I know a lot of my, my young mom friends are the same way. We're taught to go to the to the doctors and trust what they say and do what they say because they know best. Don't listen to your instincts. They know best. And in so many cases, that's not necessarily true. And it's nothing against doctors. They're amazing, hardworking people who get into the industry because most of them really want to help, you know, but there are so many issues that, you know, kind of involved in that that storyline that we really have to kind of take back a little bit of the power and be like, this is my cat, my kid, my child. I know what happened. I know it's not normal. So let's fix it. Yeah. And, and that trust, you know, trusting the experts and not questioning things. Um, you know, I think you hit a good point on the doctors are meaning well. Um, they're yeah. just not taught this stuff. Um, you know, one of the simple things you can understand is it's hard to find a pharmacist who takes drugs because they understand drugs better than anyone else. Mm. And doctors aren't necessarily taught what vaccines do or the risks with them. And when you're questioning these things and not getting the answers you're looking for, it can be, it can be very frustrating. But one thing I do want to point out is that your organization has been, uh, you know, the, the spear tip of uh, bringing this awareness to a whole new level. So I, I really thank you for that. And thank you for all your hard work. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much. I look forward to helping um, get this information out to the masses, to the, to the moms, you know, so yeah. hopefully we can do that. Yeah. So what's your, uh, what's your long-term goal for the movement? Um, exactly that more education, more empowerment for moms. Um, you know, letting, letting people know that we're not scary or dangerous or dirty people <laughs> that we're, um, help conscious that we're caring that we're loving and that we're knowledgeable we're science driven and that i want to kind of try and help create um a different a picture of what a, a mother looks like a family that looks like that chooses not to vaccinate because we experience vaccine injury which is the craziest part you know yeah the vast majority of, majority of us have yeah i love it let's change the world together yes so what's a way that we can make a difference uh, or fight for our own rights to choose? Oh, so this is a great one because I think it's to be getting involved on their local level. They need to be joining their state organizations, their, their local health choice, health freedom organizations in their state. Even if they do vaccinate, even if you, if you selectively vaccinate, you have to, you have to um, retain our right to choose. We have to make sure that we keep these freedoms that are trying to be taken away you know you know um so many so many bills have been proposed this legislative session that's really um eye-opening actually and and now is the time that we need to start speaking up and really showing our numbers showing our faces being vocal and joining your local state organizations so you can stay on top of it in your area that's going to be the most important thing i think going forward awesome awesome um, so let's let's briefly talk on the rights that we do have right now. Uh, many people are unaware of the laws involved with vaccinations. Uh, can you briefly touch on that for some of our listeners today? So first of all, I think it's really important. A lot of people don't know this is that nowhere in America is it illegal to not vaccinate. I have so many moms who come to me saying, "I, I thought it, I thought it would be illegal to not vaccinate. I had no idea I even had that choice, and that's really crucial. Um, in terms of that, in exemptions, are you talking about what types of exemptions we have? 
I think <clears throat> I think that'd be good to, to hit on those two, but but I think you covered the big thing is there's no laws actually demanding that vaccines are required um, for certain uh, like public schools and things like that. I believe it can get a little trickier, but yeah, please uh, please cover the exemptions that you know that you're aware of. Yeah, so like I said, nowhere in America is it illegal to not vaccinate. You have that choice. If you want to send your child to public school, that's where the exemptions come in. So you have to opt out your child. Um, and there are three types of exemptions. There are medical exemptions, there are religious exemptions, and there are philosophical exemptions. So medical is if um, a child has been vaccinated and has some type of anaphylactic reaction or severe immediate reaction. So medical exemptions are kind of hard to come by. And there's religious exemptions, um, which obviously if, if vaccination goes against your religious beliefs, you can opt out that way. And then there's personal belief or philosophical exemptions, which if it goes against um, your personal beliefs, then you can opt out that way. Not every state has all three exemptions. Every state has medical exemptions. Um, and as of right now, there are three states, California, Mississippi, and West Virginia, um, that only have medical exemptions. The rest of the states have some type of religious and philosophical exemption as well. So depending on, on your state, you know, again, that brings me back to why it's so important to be involved with your local organization, because they really can tell you what is needed to be done for your child if you want them to attend public school um, so that you know your rights and everything that you have to do. Okay, awesome. Um, in, in all your research, what are some examples that you have found that uh, indicates that a vaccine injury has occurred? So this is a really big thing because um, a lot of vaccine injuries are being dismissed by pediatricians, by your doctors. They say, well, that's normal. That's normal. And just because something is common does not mean that it's normal. So if you take your baby to be vaccinated and they have a fever of 104 or 105, if they start screaming, um, if they get really sick, start vomiting, or seizures, um, any type of convulsions, behavioral changes, eczema, um, development of allergies, ADHD, obviously um, if the next day they're no longer, if they're walking or, or their face is crooked, I mean, there's a whole vast array of vaccine injuries ranging from very um, local reactions to extreme behavioral and neurological damage, including death, actually. Yeah. That, that's a big one. Kids is, it's, <clears throat> it's, you know, so many babies who die from kids have just been vaccinated within 72 hours. And that's so important that moms know because they're, you know, you can say correlation doesn't equal causation um, to the end of time. And so, until that happens to you, you know? Yeah, exactly. Are you, um, are you familiar with Dr. Andrew Molden's work? Yes, yes, I've seen, yes, I am. Uh, tolerance, tolerance, lost, jaw dropping. Mm -hmm. That's the name of the video. And I, you know, again, I went through this myself. I was a Marine for eight years, so I wasn't, I didn't know how to research at the time. And, and because you get a lot of vaccines in the military, I assume they were fine. Um, so as I start to have a family, I kind of went through the, the motions that a lot of people do that are uninformed. And not until I watched, actually, and I went through college, I asked many professors, PhDs, I spent a lot of time with people that did research. And what they told me were vaccines were safe and everything else. And not until I got out in practice, and had the privilege of, of having several different mentors, uh, especially Dr. Randy Tin. He's the one who really drove it home and showed me, and he helped Jenny McCarthy out as well uh, a long time ago, um, and gave us uh, you know, medical literature and showed us that actually there are many side effects. It's been known for well over 20 years that these cause autoimmune and everything else. And then I watched Andrew Molden and saw the how he, you know, was six degrees, the guy who had had a vaccine and who hadn't just by looking at your pictures and noticing these, you know, little changes, these little anomalies, almost like many strokes. And I saw those in my own son. And when I brought those up to my ex-wife, she called me crazy, right? So now I've done a lot of work on my children. I have three that are vaccinated and one that's never been 
vaccinated at all. And there's a big difference in their immune system. However, uh, you know, getting their gut right, getting their brain cleaned out of heavy metals, getting their detox centers opened up, uh, tremendous difference. And I, I think they're as normal as normal can be today. Um, but I, I, I had that same fire inside of me to get this information out because I thought I was informed and I was actually duped by the, the mask of science. Right, exactly. I, I mean, once you really start digging into the science and, and realizing that there's no true inert placebo being used in these clinical trials, you know, that realize that there has never been a, a cumulative safety study of the 72 vaccines that we're pumping into our children, you know, because we think we're doing the right thing. Um, that's insane, you know, and, and then you can go even further and, and you start to realize that um, there's <laughs> there are all these things like primary vaccine failure, like shedding, like strain mutation, secondary vaccine failure. I mean, it's a really complicated issue. And, and as, a, as your normal parent going about the day, you don't have time to look into that. You know, you, you, you think you are trusting and doing the right thing, but we have to. We have to now. We have to look at the research and, and we need to hold doctors accountable and be like, okay, if you want me to do this, prove it. You do that. You look into this doctor. You find the research and come and come back and show me because it's not there. Yeah. It's not there. You know. You know, and then and then we have a, a world class functional medicine clinic in uh, Prairie Village, and I've seen uh, many vaccine injured children through the years, and I run hair analysis on them and look at the heavy metals and things like that, and it's pretty. Uh, it's pretty sad. It's it's pretty sad to see all this whenever people you know, trust the system and they think they're doing the right thing. And you know, then they, then they get injured and, and the kid stops talking or, or, you know, whatever else it's, it's, it's a big tragedy. And it's, it's like uh, we're at one in 36 <laughs> autism today. And by 2035, it's estimated to be one in three. So insane. It's crazy. It, it, we have to start speaking up and, and getting louder now. You know, if you're one of those people watching and you don't vaccinate or you've experienced vaccine injury, then guess what? Now's the time. It's time to speak up and, and get involved so that we can bring this awareness to, to the masses because the mainstream media certainly isn't doing that. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really important that we need to show that you can, like, like you're doing, you can recover these kids. You know, not all of them, some of them, the damage is already done and it's too severe. But there are there even with those babies we can make them feel better we can help their tummies not hurt you know we can we can get the inflammation down we can make them physically feel better even if we can't repair some of the neurological stuff there's no kid that isn't going to um, benefit from some of the recovery techniques that you utilize you guys utilize them and that's out there you just have to look for it and um I have to say with all the censorship and everything that's been going on, I, I wasn't really too worried about it until I started seeing Amazon kind of coming in. And I know I'm going off a little bit on the tangent, but um, when they when they took down the um, a couple of the recovery books, that's what really kind of threw me off my game because, because when you take away information about babies getting better, I think that is extremely dangerous. And that is the biggest red flag that people need to be like, what? And there are these two books that they took off um, for no reason other than, you know, uh, um, politicians saying that they're dangerous that have helped hundreds of thousands of kids get better. So it, it's, it's appalling and it's scary and it, hopefully it lights a fire under under everyone's bum. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and um, you know, with these with these censorships starting to happen, it is it is it is frightening. It's very frightening. Um, so that kind of brings me to my next thing. Um, tell me about the VIE. Oh, okay. So the VI, the VI event, I'm really excited about Crazy Mothers is hosting it. It's going to be in Washington, D.C. on the National Mall on November 14th, which is, um, it, it's the day, November 14th is the day that the National Childhood Vaccine Injury Act was signed into law. And if, for people who don't know what that is, that is the act that stripped the pharmaceutical companies of any and all liability pertaining to vaccine injury. So it's a, a monumental act. And since then, we've seen um, the vaccine schedule explode. It's almost nearly tripled, and our children are getting sicker and sicker. So it's a day where we can all come together. Um, you know, it's going to be speakers, 
um, musical performances. It's going to be just a great way to really show our numbers right there. Congress will be in session. Um, and then afterwards, we'll obviously have a great after event so we can all hug it out after we've all uh, bawled our eyes out <laughs> initially. Awesome. So I hope everybody can make it. Yeah. 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 We need to get as many numbers out there as possible because that's where that's where the power is in the people, really. That's where the power is in the people and where we where we draw the line in the sand. So yes. something that's kind of interesting that's um, off topic is one of the interesting things that happened to me in practice about a year ago is I had some parents bring in this, uh, this young girl who um, had really bad digestive pains, digestive problems. Um, and it, she, was under the, she was getting to where she couldn't even go to school anymore because of it. So they bring her in <clears throat> and we're working on her. And uh, I remember the, the mother looks at me and says, you know, my husband's very infatuated by what you do and, and your acupuncture and all this other stuff. And I said, well, really, you know, what's, what's he do? And she says, he's a uh, biochemist at Pfizer. And I said, ah, and then she said, nobody in their department vaccinates their children. And that was, wow. that was a big, um, a big clue that there is a lot of misinformation going on out there. And what do they know that we don't know? You know those kind of things. Yeah. That's so, great. Um, so where can people reach you? What's the best way for people to reach you? So we are on Facebook, we're on Instagram, it's Crazy Mothers. Um, our website, crazymothers.info, it will launch in just a couple of weeks, but you can go on and you can sign up for our email so you can stay in touch and up to date with everything we're doing. Um, and as for the VI event, it's going to be www.thevievent.com and that will be launched tomorrow, actually. So we're awesome. super excited about that, yeah. Awesome, awesome. Well, Hillary, I... Uh... I can't think of anything else. It's a true honor to have you uh, on our on our talk show today, and um, you know, share this information with us. Um, thank you very much for the fight you're doing, the voice you're doing, all the parents you're helping, and uh, you know, please keep up. Let's change the world together. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you guys for everything that you're doing to help recover babies too. It's so massively important, and awesome. I'm honored to be in the fight with you. Awesome. It's been a true pleasure. Okay. I'll keep in touch with you. All right. All right. Take care. Thank you, Gabe. All right. Good seeing you. Have a safe flight. Okay. I will. I will. We'll see you. Bye-bye.